if he plays like that again, will the Cavs win the series? If he can continue that, Chris, are we talking about a 3-1 collapse by Golden State? Well, you know, you need LeBron and then probably Kyrie to play close to what he did as well when he gave him 41 points. Um, or you're going to have to have a big night from J.R. Smith, who we know is capable of going for 27 points or going for three points or less. <laughs> so you don't know what you're going to get from him. But uh, the bottom line is this. Um, LeBron is going to have to play at the level he played at in game five tomorrow night in game six to push this to a final game seven. Now, he doesn't, doesn't mean he has to score 41 points, but he has to be, you know, that dominant force. It could be 30 points but a ton of rebounds and assists and great defense and, get, you know, someone else steps up uh, along with Kyrie. So, um, you know, he's making his case. He's been the best player in this series. Uh, and he's making his case that he's still the best player in the world because we know the other guy who most people have said this season at least is the best player in the world, Steph Curry, has not played as well as he did in the regular season. No, he hasn't. And uh... – they're still ahead three games to two. How are the uh, Warriors doing this with the non-MVP level Steph Curry? Well, the Warriors, I think one thing that separates them, not only from Cleveland, but from Oklahoma City and from most teams in the league, is that they know who they are. They have a very strong identity. And that identity is that we play as a team and we play our system. So every night they're moving the basketball. Every night they're moving without the ball. You know, they play the same every night. Now, some nights the shots don't fall and they may lose, but they play the same way every night. With Cleveland, they fluctuate from, you know, isolation basketball to moving the basketball and getting everybody involved, from being stagnant offensively to, you know, making quick decisions and, and moving the basketball. So they're, that's why their play is so inconsistent. And you really don't know from night to night what level of play you're going to get from Cleveland. So in some of these games, they, their offense has been too stagnant. They focus too much on, you know, one-on-one -on -one play. And to the nights that they've lost. Now, you could argue that they had a lot of one-on-one -on -one play in game five. The difference is LeBron and Kyrie were on fire. LeBron especially is not a tremendous outside shooter, to say the least. But his shot was falling in five. I mean, he had, I think he had four three-pointers. Um, he had several mid-range jumpers. He hadn't done that not only this series, but throughout the postseason. Um, so that you were able to get away with some of the things in game five that you weren't in the other games because – LeBron and Kyrie were simply hot. The question is, can they stay hot for at least one more game, if if not two more games? Uh, so that's going to be the challenge for Cleveland. Uh, Chris Broussard's with us. Uh, loss of Bogut, is that a big deal in this series, these last two games? Is that a big loss? I mean, he's only averaging, I think, 12 minutes a game in this series. So um, I don't want to overstate it. But, you know, he is a valuable player. I mean, they one of Golden State's keys – to your point about Steph not, you know, playing at the MVP level, one of the keys is their depth. You know, they got a lot of guys that do different things. Them being a true team, every part, no matter how small the statistical contri contribution may be, every part is critical. What Andrew Bogut does is protect the rim. As we saw in game two, he had five blocks. Um, he, he is a great setter of screen, and that's big for getting Steph and Clay open as they're running off those screens. Um, he's a very good passer, you know, uh, when he gets the basketball. Um, so he does the little things that do help this team win, uh, but they're certainly capable of winning without him. So if Cleveland is to come back and win this series, there should not be any asterisks mentally for people or any excuse for Golden State. Um, they're very capable without Bogut.
All right, uh, Chris Broussard with us. Give me your thoughts on how Cleveland, do they need to and how they can get Love more involved? It just seems, as he said, it's not really worked. Uh, he, he admitted that this has been a tough transition, but two years later you would think they would figure out a better way to use him. Is he just not the right guy to play third fiddle? You know what? Well, let me say this first of all. He, he averaged this season 16.9 rebounds. Um, in the playoffs, he's averaging 15 points and nine rebounds. For a third option, that's, those are good numbers. I mean, there are very, you know, for there are very few third options that put up those numbers. And if I'm not mistaken, he was the highest producing number, you know, in terms of numbers, uh, third option in the league when you just look at points and rebounds. Um, so there, you know, those numbers pale in comparison to what he did in Minnesota. But so we may look at it as wow, what's wrong with Kevin Love? But when we recognize he's a third option to two big time scores, then you understand, you know what, that's not bad. That said, you know, he didn't have sixteen and nine in game five. He had two and three. <laughs> two points and three <laughs> rebounds. Um, they can win with Kevin Love struggling. And they can lose with him putting up numbers. Game one, he had 17 points, 13 rebounds. They lost. You know, I I think the key is that LeBron and Kyrie cannot be concerned about getting Kevin Love involved. I'm sorry. And neither can the whole Cavs team. They have to go and play their game. And Kevin has to be aggressive, attacking. It's not like they're going to freeze him out. They're going to run some things for him. He's going to get his looks at the basket. He just has to convert them. He has to be aggressive. But they cannot take away from their own games to come down for several possessions and be like, let's make sure Kevin's involved. Let's get Kevin his touches. Let's get Kevin going. That works against them. They have to be able to just play freely and do their thing. And Kevin has to be uh, enough of a star to go get his in the midst of the game. You know, there's no other star in the league that we're so concerned about, is he involved? Is he engaged? Does he feel good? Where's his confidence? I mean, enough of that. He has to go out and prove that he's that level of player. Uh, Chris Broussard, I know you got to go. In a word, yes or no, are you flying back to Oakland after game six? Game seven. It will happen. We'll see you there. Thanks, pal. Book it. (laughs) Later. Take care. Chris Broussard.